In news just coming in, a blast has been reported in Ukraine capital of Kiev. This after the city sounded the air raid alert. Ukrainian officials have confirmed that their forces are battling the Russian forces in the city of Kharkiv. Regional governor has said, I'm quoting here, the Russian enemy's light vehicles have broken into Kharkiv, including the city centre. Ukraine's armed forces are destroying the enemy. We ask civilians not to go out. Now, Moscow claimed that its troops had entirely besieged the southern Ukrainian city of Kherson and the city of Verdyansk in a southeast. Defense Ministry spokesperson has said that the, cities of, uh, the two cities have been completely blocked by the Russian armed forces. Increasing proxy wars in the recent years have set a trend in rising force displacement. The number stands at a whopping 84 million worldwide and the invasion in Ukraine is only going to make things worse. Ukraine's location on the globe is a big reason for its wonderful state. The western border is the only flank which does not share a boundary with Russia or its allies. So in, naturally innocent civilians are now fleeing towards the European Union borders. Poland, Slovakia, Hungary and Romania... The UN refugee body says that since the last three days or so, the invasion of the invasion, 150,000 Ukrainian refugees have crossed into neighboring countries. Let's just get you some uh, visuals from a Polish border city where fearful families throng to evade shelling. Among the people fleeing Ukraine, at least half are going to Poland. The government has reversed 70,000 hospital beds for those who are wounded and prepared a train to transport the injured from Ukraine. Moving on to Slovakia, where charity workers and locals are helping incoming re Ukrainian refugees. Over the past 24 hours, 10,500 people have entered from the border. Governor of the Eastern Region said that the situation was getting worse by the hour. Tá situácia sa každou hodinou ako keby zhoršovala, čo sa týka počtu ľudí postupne začína tá štruktúra tých utečencov, vlastne vojnových utečencov meniť na ľudí, ktorí sú bez auta, bez finančných prostriedkov, bez jedla, bez vybavenia. Navyše tie rodiny rozdelujú na ukrajskej strane, to znamená, že mužov vracajú naspäť na Ukrajinu vlastne do boja a sem prichádzajú matky s deťmi. Some were forced to walk many kilometers through the night. Others went ahead by train, cars or buses. Few of the refugees were greeted by waiting relatives and friends. Others headed on on their own. They come into our country and they kill our people and uh, destroy our town, cities and uh, buildings. Everything. So we are angry. In Hungary, the volunteers formed a human chain to move essential goods from trucks into storage houses. Civil organizations are now collecting food and medicines for refugees fleeing the Russian invasion. Moving images coming in from the borders. Families are being uprooted, thrown into a future of uncertainties. There are thousands of such Ukrainians. As the invasion unfolds, the humanitarian costs will only get worse. As Russian troops continue to unleash their assault on Kiev and other Ukrainian cities, the West is ramping up measures to impose more sanctions on Russia, particularly targeting its economy. In the latest, Western allies have now agreed on a new list of financial sanctions against Moscow. European Union has proposed banishing a number of Russian banks from the SWIFT interbank system. With this, the West will ensure that these Russian banks are disconnected from the international financial systems. The Allies have also agreed to impose restrictive measures to prevent the Russian Central Bank from deploying its international reserves. Adding on to these, affluent Russians connected to Putin's government will also no longer be allowed to use the golden passport system to obtain a European citizenship. Speaking in Brussels, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen, other Western powers including the US, UK are also considering to move crippling, cripple Vladimir Putin's war machine.
as Russian forces unleash their assault on Kiev and other Ukrainian cities, we are resolved to continue imposing massive costs on Russia, costs that will further isolate Russia from the international financial system and our economies. In coordination with President Biden, President Macron, Bundeskanzler Scholz and Prime Minister Draghi, as well as Prime Minister Trudeau and Prime Minister Johnson, we considered a significant tightening of our international response. The European Union and its partners are working to cripple Putin's ability to finance his war machine.